Guru Nation, what is up, guys and gals, boys and girls? Live in your speakers, we've got Chris Sauber. Uh, we've got myself, Dan Sparrow. Look, we have a, a exciting uh, topics. Like, site networks are all the rage. And I got to give a shout out right now to Joel White. I just connected with him on LinkedIn. He's the founder at Market Cap Consulting. He I don't know how apparently he's um, into the financials. Let me just read you his post quick, from today. Hello, Chris. Yes. Quick question. Quick question. Yes. Before you go any further. So you yes, said. I'm too excited. I'm too excited. I understand. Site networks are all the rage, right? To quote, to quote Dan Sparrow. What about SMOs? A lot of people think they are the same thing. Okay. What do you think is the difference? Well, SMO is not a, it can or it can't be a company that a management organization, right? Which is what SMO yeah. stands for. So a site now, network is a loosely, a loose collaboration between many sites. I mean, maybe. And I haven't looked into this company. The name of the company that got acquired is CCT Research. So I'm on their website right now. If I click their about page, it says, we embed research studies in the convenience of healthcare providers' practices by providing easy access to care. We help patients suffering from debilitating diseases now while bringing hope for a cure for future generation. Uh, they have an executive team. They, I mean, they have all kinds of people on their website. They have advisory board, dermatology, board-certified dermatologists, uh, let me look, let me look to see what they've got for sponsors. Let's see what they have. They have is an integrated site network partnered directly with motivated research experienced investigators across multiple therapeutic specialties and geographies. So, I mean, so far you could say it's an SMO or, a or site network. Network. this is what I'm saying. Okay, the business model might still be very similar to site management organization, but the names change because SMOs, let's not forget, they kind of tarn like that brand of an SMO is kind of tainted from mm -hmm. two almost two decades ago now. So even if you're operating as an SMO today, you're not calling yourself a SMO. This is their page for sponsors, right? They say why CCT research. Highly experienced team and researchers, rapid startup process, large pool of patients, patients pre-qualified and ready to screen, standard SOPs for all sites, all sites utilize a central IRB, and enroll qualified patients within 48 hours. What to expect when partnering with CCT? You will have access to a group of experienced researchers with a large patient pool. You will love our rapid startup process. Love. They say you will love it. They will love $300 million. I think that's what they love. Mm -hmm. Pre-qualified patients ready to screen. Quality data delivered in a timely manner. You can expect to hit your enrollment grow. I mean, you're right, Chris. If we were in a time capsule and we go back two decades, we see this website and you put a gun to my head, I'm like, yeah, that's an, another SMO. But they're a site network. Ikevia calls it a site network. Sure. Because they're Wall aware. Street analysts. Like Wall Street analysts are calling this a site network. There's a difference among site networks too, like what DSC is. Let's talk about us real quick. Sure. We're a site wait, wait, network. Before you do that, sorry. I like the word partnering. I'm just, just saying, in the in their description, they said, when awarded a study, you're partnering with us. I like that. Okay, go on. Yeah, it's very romantic. <laughs> like, who doesn't partner? You're signing a CDA. Like, anytime. <laughs> You're signing a CDA and you win a project, you're partnering. Like, uh, <laughs> but it sounds great. I know. And then they yeah. have a, on their website, they also have four providers. So by partnering with CCT, uh, you're ready to, go. as an investigator, you are ready to go solution. You get a dedicated research team, high tech equipment, proven system. Offer your patients the most advanced treatments and increase your profits while becoming a leader in your industry. So look. Misspeak. Treatment. They said treatment. Yeah. Offer your patients the most advanced treatments yeah. and increase your profits while becoming a leader. 
Ikevia, you're going to have to, now that you guys own it, you know, we're going to talk about semantics. You might want to change that. Uh, <laughs> okay. This is highly confusing. I didn't want this to be a, like a confusing session. I wanted this to be a positive, like motivation. But thanks, Chris. We're going to make go down the rabbit hole of confusion now. Not only, because it's important, not only is there really no difference or maybe a lot of difference between site network and SMOs, or do SMOs even exist? But there's a huge difference between various types of site networks. So, well, there is a site network like the SES. We are an informal alliance of sites. Mm -hmm. You can choose to come. We charge a monthly subscription fee for the sites. We don't take any other costs. We don't take any ownership. We don't take any equity. We have influence over the sites to the best of our ability as consultants. They mm -hmm. hire us for this influence. But we are independent from their business. So, it's less risky to a sponsor to work with a site network like ours because, okay, let's say you choose 20 of our sites. Those are 20 independently owned and operated sites. We may negotiate the same budget and contract for them, for but they're all different entities, all of them different entities, usually a different LLC or a different corporation. All right. In the, I don't think our site network would ever be acquired for this high of a multiple. Because we don't own equity in these sites, right? The way I'm reading it with CCT, which is, by the way, the first time I heard of this company, which should tell you a lot about how much money is in this industry. They own, they partner with clinicians. So they want access to the research naive physicians, just like any site owner we preach about all the time, right? Well, but they own. It sounds like they own every site that they're partnering. They at least own a piece. That's so why it's more like what Yuma Clinical Trials is doing, but on a huge scale. Like it sounds like cross country and like three hundred something sites. When when you forwarded the article to to me this morning, I instantly when I read it was like, okay, this is an SMO, not a site network. Yeah, you thought SMO. No, and it's not. Is this the only description there can be? It wouldn't be a site network at three hundred billion, right? It wouldn't be a site network like the SCS. Well, I don't know what other site network there would be that they would pay three hundred million for, especially if they're all individually owned. I don't think there's a right. site network in which they're all owned by one central organization. So let's give a shout out again to Joel White. Everybody, I'm gonna put his LinkedIn underneath because he's a must follow if he has stuff like this. So. Can I read you first what, what he said? And then I'm going to read the article that he shared for more clarity. Okay. Maybe, maybe it gives us more. So let's go with the article first of what he said. Edgemont, which is a um, financial investor type of uh, uh, website. It says CCT Research is a rapidly growing U.S.-based site network that embeds clinical research studies in the convenience of healthcare providers' practices. An SMO has direct control over the, over the sites, either through ownership or contractual agreement. A site network, generally speaking, I think is similar to what we do, in which there's a loose affiliation between the sites. But do you think, though, from this analyst, it says... CCT is a U.S.-based site network that embeds clinical research studies in the convenience of healthcare providers' practices. It sounds like they're actually doing more than just consulting. Right. I mean, the description, again, if I were to guess from the description, it sounds like a site network. But being that Akiva paid $300 million for it, there's just no way that's the case, at least in my opinion. Yeah, and if you go on their own website and you see like wh what they're writing for providers, like, hey, join our network, we'll help turn your practice into gold. And then they're telling sponsors the same thing. Hey, we're rapid startup. It sounds like they have direct control over the sites. Yeah, that's why they would sound like an SMO. Right. 
but they're called Side Network and they got paid three hundred million for it. And then in the same post, Joel says IQV also paid thirty million for an SMO last quarter. So then he says the best sites and networks are continuing to perform extremely well and CROs are paying high multiples. Then he goes on to say sites are not poor. <laughs> then he says Walgreens has only signed eight contracts for its clinical trials business through end of June. I think Yuma Clinical Trials did more than that. 12 months after launch and nearly two years since hiring leadership. CVS was off to a better start and it's shutting its clinical trials business down. Science 37 has become a meme stock. This is the decentralized clinical trial stuff. Fortrea had a rough start out the gate and Cineo saved the worst for last. Both are shrinking, but I see far brighter futures for both. Further on Fortrea, remember last quarter I was really disappointed in how LabCorp CEO implied there was a queue of customers waiting for the spinoff to finish. So Fortrea is what Covance used to be. It's like rebranded. Uh, Fortrea's earnings call made it clear we don't have a queue. Uh, so there's the people are not lining up for their services. MedPace has reduced its share count by 15% since it went public. And then if you subscribe to the theory that early phase demand is a reliable indicator of future late phase demand, Charles Rivers' comments should should have you concerned. Uh, full write up by Monday. So I don't know. I think I'm just I'm leaving this like more confused than before I got in because you brought up a really good point about bringing in, like what's the difference. I thought anyone in their right mind has gotten rid of the term SMO. But so, apparently, Ikevia just acquired one for $30 million. And then a site network, which I feel like is an SMO, which I for would agree, $300 would million. Agree. I so just I don't, don't know what, what to make of all this. So if you want to spare me two minutes, I can read an article for you from Davida. Yeah, yeah. Please. All right. So Davida Clinical Research. So they're very large. I think they're, they're the major. dialysis people. Yep. yep. So it says SMO and other dirty words, a guide to different models of SMOs. <laughs> so as Dan was saying, right? SMO is a dirty word in clinical research. Like many other site organizations, Davidia Clinical Research has struggled with defining ourselves within an industry that holds firm to their acronyms. CRO, or, or Contract Research Organization, has been able to remain con constant within our business. No matter the service offering that a CRO may provide, they consistently claim to be a CRO. And what they mean by that is it could be offering just CRA work or it could be full service, yet they're both the same thing, a CRO. Right. However, site networks struggle when asked what they are. I've often found myself saying we are an SMO, for lack of a better term, or I guess you would call us an SMO, but let me explain. Different models of SMOs. The reason for our hesitation when calling ourselves an SMO, a site management organization, is due to the widespread range of different SMO models. Some SMOs own and operate the sites they manage. They have quality programs and coordinator training and a full range of management services to ensure that the trials which run at their sites go off without a hitch. However, other SMOs are the dreaded study brokers who work with a sponsor to offer up sites, but have no responsibility beyond providing a name, address, and capability sheet of a fee on a feasibility questionnaire. When these drastically different models are out there, how can we differentiate between them? The short answer is that we don't. The media clinical research is an SMO, no matter how we try to frame it. So it's better to wow. make sure that we are able to give our SMO a backstory. Site management models at Davida. Here at Davida, oh, sorry, that's the title. Site management models at Davida. Here at Davida, we have two models of site management. Our alliance network is full service. We employ and train our coordinators and manage the accounting for these sites. We take on the stage, we take on the end stage renal disease and chronic disease, kidney disease trials and provide the necessary oversight outside of the principal investigator responsibilities. The other model is our affiliate networks, or site network, I guess. Um, these are research sites that function independently from the video 
for day-to-day management, staff their own coordinators, and manage their own quality programs. These sites coordinate with the Davidia Dialysis Centers in their independent research process. Our main job, as it is for our Alliance Network, is to ensure we are integrating these research protocols into the Davidia Network of Dialysis Facilities that have many conflicting protocols. So they even say here, though, they term it a little differently. They have two different organizations, an SMO and a site network. Mm -hmm. I think they do a pretty good job of explaining the difference, which I would agree with. Yeah. Yeah. I agree too. I just, I'm on the school of thought that SMO is a dirty word. I mean, they admit it also. And I, I think this is exactly what CCT without knowing much about their business, aim to do is like, hey, we may take the SMO model, maybe we'll tweak it a little. You know, they probably like, it's not exactly the same, but in fairness to you and I, there's been like dozens of SMO models, even these guys, even the the kidney people said that, right? Um, mm-hmm. So it could be an SMO just dressed up as a site network. <laughs> Yeah, and even even Davida said the same thing. Like, hey, we're we're kind of both. Like, depending on who's paying us. Well, uh, more it's about who they're working with because mm-hmm. Davida, um, they definitely will work with independent sites, right? So that's where that's their site network. Um, mm-hmm. But then they actually contractually own in some way other sites, and that's yeah. part of their SMO. Another interesting thing to me about this CCT research is that they, well, now they're Ikevia, right? And we can spend an hour discussing why Ikevia would have bought a site network in the first place. But they are multi-therapeutic. And I think, like, the value in the future because these protocols are getting, this is just my theory, these, these protocols are getting more complex. You almost needed the Vita type of company for every therapeutic area. Mm-hmm. Because, like, you can go, I'm sure the Vita has the database for a, as complex of a renal study as you can get. They're probably your best bet. If they can't do it, I don't think anyone can. I would agree and with that. We're, we are starting to see, I've actually interviewed, um, a GI specialist group that's trying to do what the Vita does for GI, just for GI stuff. And they're doing really well. They're actually one of Creo's power users. Raymond mm-hmm. put me in touch with them. Uh, I think that might be the future. And, and they also call themselves a site network, but they are basically doing the same thing as what CCT research is doing. Right. But just with GI. So would it make sense as one of those- one of these organizations, uh, similar to what Akivia just acquired. What is it, CTI? CCT. CCT, okay. So would it make sense for this this new uh, GI network um, that Raymond put you in touch with, would it make sense for them to acquire existing sites to add to their network that are successful? and and Or would it make more sense to hire just GI doctors and then train them? What do you, what do you think would make more that's, sense? That's the route they're going. The Taking on naive doctors and implementing yep. research? Or... Yep, that's how they're growing. Yeah. Um, I've specific, I asked that question during the interview and that's the route they're going and they seem to be very successful yeah, at it. And I don't, I don't, I mean, I didn't talk to them about this, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's a similar exit at some point with them, with another CRO. And so then the question is, well, will CROs eventually become niche to where it's like, we're the renal CRO, we're the GI CRO. And then will you always have the big three, like Ikevia, that we're the everything CRO? I mean, it's interesting to see how this all plays out. But well, it's what is not surprising to me is decentralized clinical trials, like Sciences 37 and all this other tech stuff is not working out. CBS and Walgreens is not working out. But real physicians treating patients and then adding research layer on top of that is working out. And it's very valuable 
to CROs, apparently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, 300 million, got to be a record for site acquisition. Kind of what I've that never says heard to- that big of a number. So, what that says to me, what I take from that, um, so I'll start with your expression the small is the new big. I'm not sure if that's right or not. I'm not going to say it is or isn't. But what I might do is tweak that expression. And I know you don't like this because you also often say that being a generalist is the way to go. But maybe with the th- way things are heading, maybe it's like you just kind of alluded to, maybe it's specialization, right? At least at the CRO level. Maybe. Or maybe both things happen at the same time in yeah. parallel. Could be. Where, listen, we're, we're losing market share to all, maybe Ikebia or something we're seeing we're not. Maybe we're losing market share to these CROs who are specializing, right? So we're going to have to pick a market and really strike that market in preparation yeah. for what's coming. It's a possibility. But it's interesting to me that this CCT is multi-therapeutic. Yeah. But that's one of the first things I wanted to look at, too. Sure, sure. And that could be, too. It could just be a matter of maybe also, maybe it plays back to your smalls the new big, in which they know that CROs are going to lose favor, at least large CROs. So they're having to find a way to continue making revenue, right? Generating revenue. And so. if they if they think there's a new biotech bubble, like I interviewed a CEO of a biotech company. He thinks we're in the middle of a biotech <laughs> kind of correction but once we get out of it he's expecting a lot more biotech coming so more small is the new big and then maybe this is ikevia's response to servicing them like hey we'll take you from we own the preclinical we own the phase one now we own phase two through four Mm -hmm. we'll just put everything through us like (laughs) we'll We'll take it the whole way everything they even do sales and marketing when the drugs approved We'll take them from petri dish to market. Yeah. Did you know Camp Farm hired Ikebia to do sales reps for their drug? I didn't. Ikebia goes end to end. Sometimes they take stake in the IP. So they essentially have pharmacy reps now. They Ikebia employs like farm sales reps, yeah. For the yeah. small companies that don't have that yet. Interesting. They, they do that. Yeah. So I didn't know that. it's very telling. I think the number, this is like the biggest number I've seen for sites. I mean, I've heard of tech companies and I wouldn't be surprised if DCT, although that, that's, you know, the jury's still out on that. But for site, like CROs are also big numbers, but for a site network or SMO, whatever you want to call it, to command that kind of a multiple on a relatively new kind of company, I mean, I've never heard of CCT research. And on their About Us page, um, it looks like one of their founders, so Paul Lapari, he's one of their founders, or he's one of the advisory board. He's the co-founder of Hudson Capital Advisors, 20 years of private equity experience. So a bunch of like private equity guys partner with them on their advisory board. So research meets private equity. I mean, we have to, I know there's a lot of interest in this because we have calls. We're actually ducking calls with PE guys because they want to learn what's going on. Landscape. I was on a call yesterday. You couldn't make it, (laughs) but I'm keeping that line of communication open because of stuff like this. Sure. So I just wanted to get your take on that and. Maybe it begs everyone to answer what they think is SMO site now or guy. I don't know. I mean, what? I thought SMOs were done, but apparently not. Purpose of the video, I believe, at least from your perspective initially, but I didn't mean to derail that. Uh, <laughs> but was, was, maybe it was necessary derailment. Was that there's money to be made in this industry, even at site level. There's lots of money to be made. Well, I yeah, think that's what your initial... You were optimistic about the article. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it should be like, yeah. And do you think Ikevia, I don't think Ikevia is dumb money. Like, we can accuse them of a lot of stuff. I don't think they're dumb. Like, they obviously think 
three hundred million is a good deal for sites. Sure. So that should sure. tell you a lot if you're out there wanting to start a site. Like maybe this is the new benchmark for what the multiple should be. I don't know their EBITDA because they're yeah, I'd love to private. know that number. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what you think thirty million EBITDA and then like ten x so three hundred mil. I mean that. You and I know sites that do like two million EBITDA. It's like pretty good, like north end of like above average. Yeah, I, I two don't, million EBITDA. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibilities that they're generating thirty million a year in revenue and getting purchased for three hundred million. I don't. I really don't think that's out of the line of possibilities. So then, someone who's earning two million EBITDA should command what ten, or the multiple a little lower because it's less scalable. The most interesting thing about this is what CCT research apparently they've done, or else Ikea like wouldn't have bought them, is they've scaled the unscalable. So treating a patient like one-on-one, -on -one, like finding a brand new research-naive patient with a research relatively new doctor and putting them in a study, that's not really a scalable event. Like that's... That requires a lot of work. It's not the same process like over and over and over again. But they've somehow managed to create some sort of scale around this activity repeatedly to where they have scaled the unscalable. Because Brad and myself, like we go back and forth all the time, and I think we both agree at its true essence, if you're actually doing your research the way you should be doing, it's not really scalable. Like it's very human intensive. So they're able to pull it off because of the systems they put in place, but I think it's clearly also like very hardworking staff. And they probably have a tremendous like redundancy of staff to where if a coordinator leaves, they're not screwed. Or like if a PI leaves, they're not screwed. They just have someone else to come in and take over, right? Most sites, if your coordinator leaves, you're kind of screwed. Like, <laughs> you know, the owner's got to step in. Like most sites don't prepare for the worst, like if my PI is going to get hit by a bus or my coordinator is going to be a CRA. And then or, you kind of get stalled, right? Yeah. And I mean, I, as a, as a actual legitimate site network ourselves, um, often take calls from sites in which the, the doctor is, is the site owner. And he's like, Hey, my PI just quit. I mean, this happens often. CRC just quit. What do I do? I guess, well, I guess you're the yeah. CRC now, aren't you? <laughs> so do you think Akiva would have paid that much, probably 10x multiple, if CCT research had these issues over and over? No way. No way. Yep. So clearly they've done something right, and they should be commended for that. I've never heard about them, but that should be like the goals for all you guys watching. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I was just going to say, I would never, I don't care how much money I have, pay $300 million for a site network. But yeah, but you're not Akivia, and yes, you would if it, if you were the CEO of a publicly traded company and it was not your money, and investors were screaming, you got to do something. I just think it's a bad investment. You, but uh, you don't say <laughs> never, Chris. It's not your money. I know money. how you are. Not never. I just think it's a bad investment. Remains you don't own the PIs. That's, that's where the money needs to go, right? I know. I know. But what if they just pay the PIs now a salary? I know, I know where you're going. This could be another hour. We got to do a part two on this. The future <laughs> of sites getting acquired by CROs. Maybe that's like a teaser for the next podcast. Me All and right. you. Maybe Fair we'll enough. get Brad. Maybe we'll get me, you, Brad, and Fox on, and All throw right. in Monica and Judy for good measure. Oh well, yeah, I guess get, get the woman's perspective. Saveoursites.com, guys. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Thank you very much, Chris. All right.